Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have x to the power 1 over x equals e to the power pi over 2. And we're going to be solving for x. So before we get started with the solution, I just want to show you something. You know, a lot of times with equations, we can take a look at the graph to find out about intersection points, if there are any solutions or how many solutions there are, so on and so forth. It doesn't give us the exact solutions all the time, but it gives us an idea how these two functions interact. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of y equals x to the power 1 over x, along with the horizontal line y equals e to the power pi over 2 to get a better understanding. And now we're going to proceed with the solution. So here's what the graph looks like. And uh-oh they do not intersect. What is going on? So we have the graph of y equals x to the power 1 over x. As you can see here, we looked at this graph a couple times before. And then the horizontal line e to the power pi over 2. By the way, e to the power pi over 2 is about 4.8, close to 5. And uh, why did I mark that point e comma e to the power 1 over e? That is where our function x to the power 1 over x has a maximum. So that's basically the largest value for our function, and it just happens to be less than e to the power of pi over 2. Therefore, these two curves, graphs, whatever, do not intersect. That means there are no real solutions. But that doesn't mean there are no solutions, because we could still look for non-real solutions. So let's go ahead and proceed with that. First of all, before we start with the, you know, proceeding with the solution, I just wanted to give you a quick value, e to the power of 1 over e. By the way, it's pretty close to square root of 2. 1.444667 something. So it's about 1.4. And as you can see, that is definitely much less than 4.8 something. All right? So cool. Let's see how we can solve this problem and find a solution that is not real. Okay. So first of all, let's repeat our... Um, Equation x to the power 1 over x equals e to the power pi over 2. You'll probably recognize one of the videos that I made recently. You can check that out here. Uh, and you should recognize this expression e to the power pi over 2. Or if you dealt with complex numbers before, hopefully you'll be familiar with that. Anyway, so here is the formula that I'm going to be using. It is e to the power i alpha equals cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. Obviously, i is the number whose square equals negative 1. That's our imaginary unit. So, I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So, for my first method, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to start off with e to the power pi over 2, and write it as e to the power 1 times pi over 2. And the reason why I separate the 1 is I want to write the 1 in terms of i. So, I'm thinking, what is the definition of i? i squared equals negative 1, so 1 is the opposite of negative 1, so it's negative i squared. So I can write this as e to the power negative i squared times pi over 2. Make sense? And then the magic begins. Since our formula has something like e to the power i alpha, which is the angle, the argument, I can kind of separate those two things like e to the power i times pi over 2, and then raise it to the power to get this exponent, I do need negative i. That's all I need, because i times negative i is negative i squared. Make sense? Okay. What about e to the power i pi over 2? Well, by definition, e to the power i alpha is equal to that, so it's going to be cosine of pi over 2 plus i times sine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and sine of pi over 2 is 1. Therefore, this is going to equal i times 1, which is i. So just another way of writing i, e to the power i times pi over 2. And of course, there is infinitely many ways to write it. Now, we got i on the right-hand side, and we have x to the power 1 over x still on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and put these two together, right? So we got x to the power 1 over x equals e to the power i pi over 2 to the power negative i. So this part is i, right? 
So we now have i to the power negative i. They still don't agree that much. We have the x at the bottom or the base at the base, but the exponent doesn't really match up. Unless you do a little bit of manipulation. So here's how it goes. i squared is equal to negative 1. From here I can write i times i is negative 1. And then I can go ahead and separate uh, by one of the i's or just divide by i. i becomes negative 1 over i. And from here the opposite, negative i becomes 1 over i. In other words, 1 over i is the same as negative i, so I can go ahead and replace this negative i with 1 over i. And that does the trick, because now this becomes i to the power 1 over i. Let me rewrite what I have here, because this is significant. So I, can, I have x to the power 1 over x equals i to the power 1 over i. So you kind of have to have an i for these things, but hopefully you see what I see. What do you see? You, you notice... Hopefully that from here I can conclude, hey, x equals i is a solution. Because if x is i, then this works. Is that the only solution? Something to think about? Please comment. Okay, let's talk about the second method. The second method is going to use a similar argument, slightly different, you know, but will arrive at the same result, of course. Again, this is one of the solutions. I'm not saying these are all the solutions, but I'm also not saying that there are more solutions. I just want to leave it as an exercise to the reader. Don't you hate that, ex don't you hate that expression when they put it in a textbook like, the left is exercise, the, the, the rest is left as an exercise for the reader. Anyways, I just couldn't say it. So what am I going to do with this? I'm going to, so I know the presence of something like e to the power i alpha. So i multiplied by an angle is a good thing, especially if it's in the exponent. But I'm missing the i here. So why not bring it in? Multiply or I should say raise both sides to the power i. Let's raise both sides to the power i, right? It's not even real, but that's okay. Then we get x to the power i over x on the left hand side and on the right hand side we get e to the power i times pi over alpha and i'm sorry pi over 2. so this is the part that is interesting because we said e to the power i alpha is cosine alpha plus i sine alpha and then we can go ahead and replace alpha with pi over 2 and this gives us again cosine pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. This is 0, this is 1, so this is i. What is that supposed to mean? It means this is equal to i. So another way of writing i is e to the power i times pi over 2. And again, there are infinitely many ways to write it. You can just keep adding multiples of 2 pi, so on and so forth. But I'm just talking about one of these solutions here. So I got x to the power i over x equals i. And you might be saying, like, what is the big deal about this? Well... Here's the thing. If you raise both sides to the power x, something interesting happens. The x cancels out here, and you get x to the power i equals i to the power x. So i is a number. It's imaginary, but still a number. So we're looking for x, and x is a variable. What could x be? x could be i, because i to the i is i to the i. An i for an i. Anyways, you get the idea, hopefully. And this is, again, one of the solutions. Are there any other solutions? Please comment. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.